एंटरटेनमेंट फ्रेश न्यूज strengthen yourself despite the challenges that you had to face and of course after uh the sickness and the illness the new perspective you must have had about life about things in general you know about things that you took it for granted otherwise you know must have had a different or a new meaning to it uh so that motivated me to read your book and that is probably what motivated you to write the book right it's just not about your illness uh but how you overcome your illness how you overcame the challenges and despite the sadness and the dark cloud there is a silver lining because you know in, in suffering sometimes we intend to be innovative as well you know and the suffering that you went through probably innovated you innovated your perspective innovated your outlook on life the things you took you know for granted and mundane things in life you know had a different meaning the nature the mind the spirit the body you know all that uh so and that becomes interesting reading because you know as a human being what we are interested in most i mean as a human being what are we interested in most we're interested uh, about another human being that is the most interesting part for one human being you know we're always interested in another human being uh so of course we're all interested in knowing your narration especially a popular famous person like you you know uh, who is known for your beauty for your glamour for your body who had to go through all those challenges which probably made you a caricature of yourself at one point or the other you know and that must not have been a very easy thing to digest uh so that made a very interesting reading and uh I was in too wrong because despite you know in spite of your uh, sickness and diagnosis you have spoken a lot about life you spoke you spoken a lot about the spirit and the mind which will interest us all because you know the unpredictability of life the fear of life whether you are in sickness or in health you know we all have that we all have that fear we all have that sense of mortality in us somewhere you know we don't carry it on our sleeve on a day to day life otherwise we won't be able to get things done but we all have that you know whether a person who is in sickness or whether in health so that is a very strong link your emotion links to the rest of us because we identify with that you know very strongly so overall thank you so much for writing this book you know sharing your experience i'm sure it must not have been very easy for you to do it uh to put yourself out there in the open you know open up yourself now and it's 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 pleasure being here on this on the stage and talking to you like this uh what i would like to ask you is uh you know when you confront a serious disease such as cancer you know especially you on your fourth stage and it has already metastasized you know and and that is a that there's a very fatal stage that you're in you know and when you first confront it I think you know most of us what we intend to do is when we are told of our fatal disease we go through this the first phase is always the denial phase you know it cannot happen to me it's not me you know this is something that happens to someone else this is something that i read about somebody else you know so you go through the denial phase and then slowly you know it starts sinking in in you and in a person and then you sort of intend to sort of like take it in and then you say that okay this is what i will have to live up with and then later on then you have you build up a courage and the courage of course is <clears throat> is not only you yourself but the other sources that come your lovely mother your father your family you know uh, when i read the book the amazing thing the thing that you have is i mean you have your strength of your own you're a very courageous person but at the same time you have a tremendous support system absolutely a tremendous support system in your mother in your father in your brother you are so lucky If I fall sick tomorrow, I will not have that support system. My parents are not around. I don't know what what my brothers and sisters are going to do it because I always say we're five siblings, you know, we're five and this is me and this is them. 
So, <laughs> uh, so that's a very nice position to be in, especially when you have a cancer. You know, your tremendous mother has always been a backbone for you, you know, and you've taken so much energy from her. So congratulations. Maybe you would like to share some experience of your own with the audience and myself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajeshi. It meant the world to me that you read the book. Uh, you've known me a little bit about as an actor, as a person, but uh, uh, when uh, I got to know that you'll be part of this uh, launch and you'll be reading the book, I was uh, really, really thrilled. Thank you for doing this. Um, and thank you all for being here, um, really supporting and, and loving and thank you so much. Um, and rightfully so, um, I have, let me begin with my gratitude towards my family who's been my strength at the time. Uh, you all have just recently heard my mom uh, and um, I'm totally blessed to have a mother like that, to have amazing father, to have amazing family support and few close friends whom I truly value and who were there. Um, so my uh, thank you and gratitude to, to them. And so I'll talk a little bit about my book. The, I felt uh, compelled to write this book especially about cancer, uh, how it impacted me, and uh, what all happened, because I feel it is uh, from a first a person's perspective, a person who's gone through uh, this kind of uh, life-threatening disease, uh, is that kind of, a, in the mainstream, uh, there's less of a uh, kind of a book. Uh, I had asked my publisher, Penguin Random House in uh, New Delhi, I had asked them, do you recommend any book? So they had actually mentioned a book called When Breath Becomes Air, and when I was reading that book, uh, I mean, it was beautiful, it's poetic, but it is also very sad. So I, I felt uh, that's not how I want to tell my story, and I want to give hope. And uh, because I believe in second chances, I believe in life, and I believe uh, that uh, in silver lining after the dark phase. So that's why I felt, uh, even though I really, uh, I have tried my level best to be earnest and honest and take my readers to uh, the fears uh, of what a cancer patient goes through. And I know, I know, whoever reads that uh, gets to feel what I was going through. So I'm sorry for taking my readers to down the lane of pain and trauma. Um, but no, no, but that's, that's something that we all identify with, you know, whether we're in sickness or in health, because that's always in, our, in the back of our mind, the unpredictability of life, the fear, the mortality, you know. So you were right on. The, the story was fantastic. Carry on. So, uh, yeah, um, but then I knew that towards the end, because it's a story also about overcoming the difficulty. So um, that's why I felt um, it's initial will be shaken up, but I know there's going to be relief at the end. So, uh, and also I feel my perspective towards life has changed a lot, as you rightfully told, said that I was taking life for granted. I was uh, taking everything that came as a gift to me um, uh, for granted, like beautiful family who's here, who's, who stood there like a rock through my trans, uh, really struggle time. I took them for granted. I took, uh, I had a wonderful career and, and people, so many fans loving me, adoring me, showering me with so much of love. I took everything for granted and how, uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer and I, I realized that life was slipping by, how I was desperate to save all that, that I initially had taken for granted and I didn't care a damn. And uh, that's when I realized, see, I, I better tell this story and, and tell uh, about my lessons in life so that somebody else probably could benefit from it. Not to take uh, love for granted, not to take work for granted, not to take this life for granted, not to take 
things that happens that comes to us, you know, uh, we don't take it, we don't value it till it, we really struggle. Um, actually, that's the main purpose to writing this book. Um, uh, while telling my story is also important, the lessons that I've learned, how my perspective towards life changed, how, what kind of life I'm seeing. And honestly, and today, uh, even if I lead a short life, I really don't care so much, as long as I lead quality life. As long as I get to enjoy and savor and taste and really welcome life with, with open arms and full heart. So. You know, when I'm listening to you right now, I uh, just remember a few lines from, uh, I think it was uh, Rudyard Kipling. You know, there's, there's a poem called If. You, you like that poem? And there's a few lines. I'm not going to go through the whole poem, but there are a few lines which is, you know, so much uh, uh, familiar or similar to the kind of emotion you must have gone through, probably. You know. It says that if you, I mean, all his lines start from if. So he said, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after it's gone, and so hold on when you have nothing else but the will that says to you, hold on. I so identify with the emotions that you must have gone through because there was one point in your life when you, I mean, you probably you see a few lines in the book as well where you had almost like, you know, there was a stage, phases in your life where you wanted to give up and just maybe say goodbye peacefully mm -hmm. to this world and things like that. And that is the moment when you probably did not have any energy, any will. But that is the moment when you stuck on and you held on and you hold on to your energy when there was absolutely nothing else to hold on. And that is when you become courageous. Because the kind of, I mean, when I read the diagnosis, the kind of stage that you have gone through, it was a fatal stage. It was the fourth stage. Cancer was rampant. I think 19 or 20 percent of survival chances. So you're amongst those 19 percent yes. of the people yeah. uh, who survive, uh, you know, facing a disease like yours. So that was tremendous. Uh, and with that kind of courage, I think you're going to go a long way. And with that kind of mentality. And with this renewed energy and life. And so congratulations. You're going to live for long. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Radish. And uh, I see um, Vijay Kumarji, uh, in, in his, with him in an interview, I said, the whole thing about life is going out gracefully. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. At one stage of life, what you think is, what do you want the most? Oh, I just want to exit gracefully from this life. And that becomes the most important thing. You know. Uh, to exit I totally agree, Rajeshi. I think um, men, um, during this whole journey, uh, death uh, was one of the topic which was consistently in my head. And the only thing that was, I was looking at, okay, if I had to die, what kind of environment I would want to leave this earth and what kind of frame of mind. And what was not acceptable to me is to die in fear and die in desperation, wanting to live. So when the time comes, I want to exit gracefully and with dignity, for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> because another two lines. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please press the bell icon.